Hello, a very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of the AM Show. Just gone by, my colleague Benjamin Akapo had a discussion on a national airline. We are now zooming into the second part of our big stories, and this time round is on agriculture and the conversations around how we can harness the full potential of that sector to aid in the development of our country. Well, this morning, to help me have that conversation, I have Mr. Anthony Morrison and Evans Tre Mensa, and they'll be sharing their thoughts with us. These two people have worked in the agri sector for some time, and they have um, levels of experience that they can bring to bear in this particular conversation. So uh, let me start with Evans Tre Mensa, who has been organizing seminars, and I see that a lot on social media, uh, and focusing on agri, especially for youth development. Good morning to have you here. Um, your quick thoughts about the management of a Greek in this country and the concerns that over time politicians haven't done so great in that particular sector. All right, good morning, uh, Dennis. I think that uh, over the years, the way uh, our politicians and policymakers have handled our agri sector uh, cannot be said to be perfect. However, I think that the agri also cannot be decoupled from, from politics. Mm. I would say that it has been politicized 100%. But I think that the policy makers, the drivers of the policy, somehow make it to look like it has been politicized. For instance, um, if we look at the planting for food and job uh, policy. I mean, it is a purely political decision or initiative, all right? And, and in that sense, you will want to see that it is the political actors, you know, at the Ministry of Agri, that would drive that initiative. So on a larger uh, 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 sense, you will agree that even though we are not supposed to politicize our agriculture sector, somehow, once it's been driven by political actors, their interest, their uh, uh, vision, how they want to direct and drive that sector, will have a very... Hi. Oh, too bad we lost um, Reverend Evans Tremens said that he's CEO of Agri Impact Limited, and he was making a very important point there on the planting for food and jobs. And um, Anthony Morrison is CEO Chamber of Agri Business. Uh, he will also be sharing his thoughts with us. Well, we have Reverend Evans Tremens back. I'm sorry we lost you there. Um, just wrap up on what you were saying. Yes. Yeah, so I was saying that. It, it, it's not supposed to be politicized, though, but because politicians and political actors are the ones driving it, uh, you will see that their political inclinations and influences will have a lot of uh, 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 impact on it. And that is where sometimes it, it affects the sector. All right. There's All right. The, I believe that going forward, we should have a conversation how we can decouple politics from that sector so that we can all benefit from it. Well, so we, we've we been having these conversations over time. Um, you have been organizing seminars, especially for young people. Um, on the front page of the Daily Graphic yesterday, there was this story. And um, you know the man, Juma Odum, the one who is said to have revolutionized the Nigerian agri sector when it comes to rice production and the consumption of locally produced rice. Here's what he thinks. We must put the agri sector under the National Development Planning Commission, where, you know, there's a grand plan, so it's not left to the discretion of a certain political party whether or not to continue a certain project so that another person is not credited for its success. You know how we do it in this country, unfortunately. Um, how do you think we can practicalize this, and, and how soon should we do it? Uh, you know, uh, I, read, I read the same story. I know uh, Mr. Odum is a, a mentor, somebody I look up to in the sector. However, uh, Benis, let's look at our history. 
the National Development Planning Commission, uh, since its inception, exactly what uh, has the institution done so far, so that we can just oppose it to the, the current contest and see what they can do in the future. We, we, we used to have vision 2020. What has come up with vision 2020? I mean, where are we now? What exactly has the, the National uh, Development Commission done so far that we can say that this is their work? Because they are supposed to lead in the national development policies. But the policies are mostly influenced by politicians and, and driven by them. And I can really see their impact mm. okay, in our national life. Mm. All right. Unless, of course, we decide that from today, we are all making a decision that we are giving out very key sectors to the economy to National Development Planning Commission to drive it and to run it. But I don't see that thing, that one happening. If we give the agri sector to the National Development Planning Commission and we see that they should run it, invariably it will come back to the politician taking control of it and driving it for their own interest. So uh, it's a good call, of course, but I don't see the practicality of it unless we all decide that we are now relinquishing the, the, the agri sector to the National Development Planning Commission. Or, 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 or institution to run it independently. But you, you will still have the political influences coming from other politicians and the, and the, 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 the government in power. They're trying. Well, uh, we lost uh, Reverend Evan Stremen, sir, again, but he was just responding to the call. Um, to have the agri sector put under the NDP, NDPC. Let me bring in now the, the CEO of the Agri Chamber, Anthony Morrison. Good morning to you. Let me start off on that point with, with you as well and give further um, details to what uh, Mr. Juma Odum said. Now, he was speaking um, at the graphic national development series and is the first uh, of its kind. And he says, we don't need manifestos to drive agriculture. We need a national program to drive it. And that's why he believes the NDPC must be given that task to develop an agenda and a, a plan for our great sector so that no matter which party comes in, there's an existing policy they run with. Whichever party takes us to any point, the next party or the next government run by a particular party takes over. What are your quick thoughts on that? Well, um... Thank you very much, and uh, very good morning to your cherished viewers. Uh, first of all, I heard the gentleman speaking and uh, making a statement that uh, I think that uh, I need to correct because the chamber works very closely with the NDPC, and uh, the kind of work they do, um, I tell you, if you get in there and get up, you appreciate their work. Uh, with regards to the agriculture sector, NDPC has done a lot of work. In fact, our national nutrition policy, the food security policies, and several others were led by NDPC. So please, um, when we are on national television, we should be mindful of... Sorry to interject. Somebody. Sorry to sorry to interject. Um, can you hear me, uh, um, Mr. Morrison? I think a Reverend Tress point was that the institution exists, it has done some, some work, but what is the level of its impact? And I have hosted the NDPC here, and we've had conversations about the fact that there are plans that exist, but are those plans executed to the letter? Do we say, for example, this nutrition policy that, that exists, is it being carried out? Is it being executed in the way and manner that it should be? Well, to the best of my knowledge, there is no institution in Ghana whose policies or strategies have been implemented to the latter. In Ghana, the major problem we have is to drive some of these implementation strategies. So uh, even if you take uh, the government's own uh, coordinated economic uh, program, you realize that there are so much uh, challenges with its implementation. Mm. We, are, we are going into we are going into an election in 2024, which is 
just a year and a few months from today, are you confident that if we say from the next election during the campaign period, we don't want to hear what anybody has for the agri sector. We don't, know, we don't want to know what your government or your future government policies will be. As a people, we will determine how our agri sector should be run and we will put it in the hands of the NDPC to ensure that whichever government takes over will execute it to the letter. Do you have that confidence that we can do that for the 2024 elections? Well, the Chairman of Agribusiness holds um, a divergent view with regards to NDPC as uh, the agricultural implementation organization for the country. Our strategy as a country is well spelled out. Uh, MOFA is not the implementation. They are policy development that also harness that of the coordinated policy from NDPC. The decentralization system of the agriculture sector puts the implementation at the doorsteps of the local government. So we, that is why we have a deputy minister in charge of agriculture at the Ministry of Local Government. And if you go to the local government or the local government ministry, um, at the district level, we have the Department of Agriculture, which is ceded to the district assemblies. Then at the regional level, you have the regional agricultural department. Now, and that also at the regional level. So let's be clear in the agriculture implementation program. Uh, programs are run at the national level, all right, like the PFG, but the implementation of it actually sitting at the district levels. What we should be doing for agriculture is not to put uh, the implementation at NDPC, but to give the sector enough money. Recently, if you listen to the President's State of the Nation address, and I'm sure that also occasion from the Chamber's uh, 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 calculated uh, budgetary allocation for the sector, and also what goes into with regards to the development partners, over 40% financing of the agriculture sector, and over 10 billion importation of uh, uh, foodstuffs into the country. The president stated clearly that, yes, there is uh, a need to do that, but what is the strategy? We need a strategy, we need continuous investment. And that was why we said that if we can look at at least $1 billion to $10 billion annual continuous investment, don't forget, Ghana is a signatory to the CADEP and the African Union uh, uh, Maputo and the Malabo Declaration. That requires every government to make available at least 10% of its budgetary allocation you know, in incremental form for the sector. Population has been increasing from 80 million to about 32 million people. And we still continue to make less than 1% budgetary allocation for a sector that requires uh, continuous incremental budget allocation for us to be able to achieve our food security challenges. So it's not about uh, who is implementing, it's about government making the deliberate effort to put money, public funding into agriculture. Mm. When you look at European Union, you look at United States Department for Agriculture of USA, they always drive serious investment into the agriculture sector. But then there is another call on the side that how do we also design some innovative financing from the private sector? And these are other suggestions where we are looking at, okay, can government give the private sector some exemptions or in terms of tax rebate if they decide to go into agriculture so there are some of the areas that we are still looking at. How do we win ourselves of foreign uh, influence when it comes to our own food production as a country? So we have to look at a more coordinated strategy towards funding of agriculture in Ghana mm. and to make sure it's sustainable. The sustainability of it is, is a major concern. Mm. And ideally, uh, you may want to say that as a country, we should have uh, a national uh, 
Food and Agriculture uh, Steering Committee or Council, which is made up of the president himself, the managing directors and CEOs of major banks in the country, and other major corporations. So they can drive some public funding and put it directly into it. Here is it must be put at the behest of the president. Okay, just like the president is co-chairing the sustainable development goals and other uh, uh, climate change and all that, we need the president to lead. But the implementation will have to be done as mm. stipulated. Right. We'll, we'll be wrapping up this conversation shortly. But let me come to uh, Reverend Evans Tremen, sir, and, um, and take your concluding thoughts on this conversation. You are organizing a summit. Um, like I mentioned earlier, this is something very dear to your heart. Tell us more about that summit and how you hope that um, these conversations that you have, especially with young people, will culminate in that uh, desire that we all have for the agri sector to indeed be uh, very sustainable and run efficiently. All right, thank you very much, Bernice. Um, I think that, uh, let me still retreat my point that uh, Mr. Morrison was wrong when he said that uh, I, did, I don't know about what the uh, National Development Planning Commission uh, it, 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 uh, does. What I want him to know is that what I said was that National Development Plan uh, Commission has been in the system, they've been working, all right? But my point is still, is still that they cannot run the agri ministry or the agri sector because it has a very strong political influence. I'm saying this to say that we need a political way to drive the agriculture sector if you really want to see it impacts in all the sectors. Of but, but Rev, is that not where the problem is then? Is that not where the problem is? Because if party A comes, or even if a government under a certain party comes and says, this is what I want to do, let's take planting for food and jobs, for example, and begins it four years, eight years, is running it. And then another government, it could be the same party, but a different president with a different vision, takes over and says, oh, I don't think planting for food and jobs is the way to go. Let's focus on something else. That's where the problem is. So there may be a political will, but because there's no laid down plan, everyone comes with their own vision and then implements it to a point. And then there's really no real growth because as a people, we've not determined exactly what we want to do. So is the problem not then that the political will can be there but when there is no plan we are running with, everybody takes out, you know, based on how they feel or what they it, think is the a, best. A, yes, it's a conversation that we can we can take it further. I mean, by rallying all the stakeholders, okay, to have a very strong conversation going forward. And my point is that to run the agri sector, we need a very strong political way. Someone with leadership courage, someone with vision someone with empathy to see that they want to see transformation and change in the sector all right and and you can never dissociate politics or policy making from the agri the agri sector is the is the foundation of the economy and therefore we need courageous uh, leaders that will run it and drive it having said that uh, uh, public investment as he said i agree with him that needs to be uh, really uh, uh, pushed into that sector so that we can be able to pay a lot of uh, infrastructures. We need a lot of uh, public funding. We need to have innovative finance, as you said, in order to be able to push a lot of money into, mm. that, into the area, especially the rural development side. A lot of people are losing their farms. They are moving out to the urban areas, adding pressure to the cities. Um, that is the reason why I have taken it upon myself to drive this narrative to be able to move a lot of young people into that sector by inspiring them, letting them know the, the value in the average sector, how they, we can incentivize the sector to have a lot of people to go in. Mind you, we are all saying that we need to create jobs in the country. There are no jobs in the public sector. How do we create jobs when we are not focusing on the average and, and making it more attractive and getting more people in there and helping them to be able to build decent life. Mm. That is the core, that is the, the mission. Mm. You know, we need to have a very strong courage 
vision, leadership, inspiration to be able to drive many of these young people to create decent jobs in the agri value chain. And Mr. Morrison will attest to the fact that the agri sector has the capacity to accommodate almost everybody in Ghana. Okay, we are saying that almost about 12.5% of people are unemployed in the country. How do we work towards reducing that kind of uh, a number so that we can get more people in that sector? And that is the reason why we are organizing the summit. They're bringing experts, stakeholders in to tell us the opportunities that are in, how we, government agencies can collaborate with all of us so that we can create an enabling environment for these young people driven with technology so that they can be able to uh, at least help us to secure food food for, 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 for our people. Mm. You know, food insecurity has become something that is, is, is a headache of nations, but we have the energies, we have the young people. How can we mobilize them, mm. all right? Drive them with inspiration. Venice, we've been speaking about our great problems time and again. What we need is that the solutions that all have been perfect is there. The researches are all there, papers are there. We need leadership, somebody to drive it, to lead the people, to right. tell them that this is the way I've been there. It is valuable, it is it is conducive, it is attractive. Let's go. A leader is someone who knows the way, who shows the way, and who also walks in the way. Right. So when is this program? When is this program and how can people be a part of it if they're interested? Yes, the program is happening going tomorrow, uh, 1st of April at the KNUST Engineering Auditorium. And it's for free. Everybody can come there and register. You can also go to the website of our great web Ghana and register and come. Uh, we have outlined many opportunities for our young people there. As they register, we start the training for them. We engage them. They're going to have different parts of the service. We're going to have breakout sessions. People that want to go into crop uh, production or, or animal production. Those who want to go into, into uh, 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 processing. Those who want to even go into tree planting. We mm. have all those earmark opportunities for them. And right. as they come, we are expect we're going to take them through. And the training will start. Incentives will be given out. And then we will monitor them and make sure that they are doing the right thing. So that we can all safeguard the food security and secure our nations for all of us to enjoy. Right. So I'm just looking at this. There's such a, a list of people who are going to be there. John Kuma, Deputy Minister of Finance, is expected to be there. You have Ben Boachi ASEP, um, Sepeni Kadakon. She is a founder of Pharma, uh, Pharma Tribe. And so this is just a, a long list. So you can find the website again, you said is what? Agri. Um, agriweb.org agriweb.org okay and so it's the ghana youth agriculture summit just by way of information just get a quick point everyone who is on this bill has something to offer this conference right the reason is that for instance john kuma is coming to speak about policies and partnership for for agriculture development what the government is doing how it's going to partner private sectors you know that the one mr morrison said Mm. If you look at uh, uh, Fusu from the NEIP, uh, what, is their, what is their training mandate for young people? If you look at uh, Sepenika Dab, she's a farmer, she's a vegetable farmer in the north. She's going to tell us how we can do it in the north, how we can encourage more people in the north to also go into vegetable farming. Uh, we have Ben Boachi, who is going to talk about climate change and agriculture, how we can use climate smart agriculture solutions to improve our, our food security. Mm -hmm. We have lawyer uh, Richard is also into fintech, you know, and 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 agri 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 tech. She's, he's going to tell us about emerging technologies in the agri sector and how the youth can take advantage of. We have SM Bank SME head. We're going to take at how we can take advantage of the SM Bank uh, policies and programs for the young people. So everybody who is here has something to offer our young people, and we are encouraging everybody everywhere in Ghana to head to Kumasi KNUST tomorrow first at the Engineering Auditorium. And we are all going to get together, make sure that our country drives forward. We increase our prosperity level for our country. We make sure that we're able to secure our borders by securing our food system and helping every young person to build decent life and, 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 and 
and, and prosper. Mm, thank you for, for doing this. We wish you all the best and we will be following on what on what will be happening mm -hmm. at the Ghana Youth or Greek Summit. And uh, for you, uh, Mr. Morrison, your final thoughts uh, as we wrap up the conversation. We are getting into the campaign period and so uh, a lot of our president, president hopefuls, uh, let me put it that way, they have to be flag bearers before they're president, but their ultimate aim is to be president. So those who are hoping to be presidents are listening. Uh, what must they be focusing on as we prepare for the 2024 elections? And what should um, the, the ultimate goal be for the agri sector? Well, uh, let me emphasize here that um, Ghana's agriculture does not require political leadership. It requires private sector leadership. The economy is driven by the private sector. We need government to make policies that are so sustainable that the private sector can invest into it. What we have been saying at the policy level is that government ought to make not medium to short term, but long term policies. Because if you look at our medium and short term policies, they are only four years, five years, seven years. No, looking at the agriculture sector, no serious investment partner who make investment into it when it's five years. Now, let me also add that I'm also the chairman of the Ghana Agriculture Sector Schools Body of TVET Commission. And the major issue when we have done our skills gap analysis is skills for the agriculture sector. Three key issues, skills, market guarantee, and finance. And we always say that if you look at the post-harvest losses of Ghana, you know that Ghana produces a lot of food. Our problem is market. Two, if we are to if we are able to harness on the skills that we have and increase the kind of we need to be able to be competitive and have comparative advantages, we need to bring on board some additional skills, especially at the farm institute and colleges, where the sector skills body have actually uh, design a, a number of curriculums and manual mm. that are for the training of all these students across the board, even at the technical university level. So we need to look at what exactly do youth need. And I have, I can tell you, I've done youth activities before uh, in the past 15 years. I can tell you today, when you interview a youth and he says, I'm giving you everything, go and stay in the rural areas. We tell you that, look, in the rural areas, there are no access to internet. So social media is a disincentive for a lot of youth to go mm. into agriculture. We have done a research with FAO some seven years ago, where we interviewed more than 1,600 youth, and not even one person said that they can stay a day with that social media. So that should tell you that the complexities of the issues with youth are not right. about seven mm. Mm. Well, we'll have to leave it here. Uh, too bad we, we lost uh, Anthony Morrison's feed. But this morning we've been talking about the agric sector and calls for uh, the depoliticization of that sector. And uh, we've been exploring the angles and interesting contributions there by our guests. If you missed any portion of our conversation, it will be live on our Facebook page. You can furnish yourself with the details. It's now time for my tweeny to join me when i say my tweeny you understand when you see her and we're going to be talking about cues and lyrics okay and don't worry don't don't change the dial she'll be here to tell you more about that do stay